The situation in Myanmar remains precarious. With me is the spokesperson of the National Unity Government, that is the government in exile of Myanmar. So welcome to Beyond. Uh, my first question to you is uh, the question about uh, your government, the National Unity Government. What is it, if you can explain to our viewers? Yes, um, National Unity Government of Myanmar is the legitimate government of Myanmar. As you know that um, we had the, uh, the free and fair election in 2020, November, and then uh, the, the military station coup against a democratically elected government on February 1st, 2021. On February, a uh, few days, several days later, the parliamentarians, they were able to convene the um, Zoom um, uh, on the plat Zoom platform at the parliament and then elected the uh, the committee for representing the Peter Osudu, that's mean the committee representing parliament. And that meeting, parliament meeting, uh, over 80% of the elected MPs attended. So that uh, C CRPH in the short, and that it's uh, representing the parliamentarians. So CRPH uh, led that uh, process of forming this national unity government uh, even though NLD, uh, Do Aung San Suu Kyi's party, NLD won the uh, landslide election, uh, this unity government, uh, we have uh, the election winner, uh, NLD, not only NLD, but also uh, different um, ethnic representatives, and also from CSO, um, and also that uh, strike, uh, sorry, civil disobedience movement, etc. So, National, uh, in short, National Unity Government, NUG is the legitimate government, both de jure and de facto. And the most, uh, not only that, we are the most, NUG is the most inclusive government in Myanmar history. Um, even though that uh, the international uh, community, or uh, sorry, media uh, think that it's an excite, government excite, but actually that our government is in the, in operating inside Myanmar, uh, for example, uh, our president, the active president, the prime minister, and majority of the, our cabinet members are inside Myanmar and operating inside Myanmar. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, uh, what is the situation in Myanmar? If you can tell us, if you can describe about the situation, uh, we have seen uh, reports of border towns falling uh, to rebels. Uh, uh, if you could talk about that as well. Yeah, um, so um, that's a three years ago, over three years ago, um, the military military junta led by um, chief, military chief Myanmar Lines staged a coup attempt against the civilian government. And the, the whole country uh, peacefully protests against the uh, coup. And unfortunately, military uh, violently cracked down and killed the peaceful protesters on the streets across Myanmar. So the people, uh, so as you know that uh, we uh, NUG was formed and the people uh, actually that people pick up their own arms whatever they can grab and they defend themselves against the terrorist military so that our government formed that uh, PDF People's Defense Forces on May 5th uh, 2021 to protect civilians and defeat the military junta. so um, so that we stage in the resistance uh, from the different sectors, militarily, diplomatically, politically, um, the economically, et cetera, et cetera. So that our military front um, getting the momentum uh, uh, late uh, 2023. And then we, uh, from from the study of the, uh, whatever that we can grab, we organize over three years, uh, over two years time. And then uh, we, uh, we, we, we are in the position to stage up offensive against the uh, military forces uh, together with the ethnic armed groups. Uh, our, our, we were be able to build that um, the, the drive operations and the station drive operations against the military. So um, not only border towns, we, the resistance forces able to liberate uh, more than 60% uh, of the Myanmar territories from the military regime, military junta, and then uh, since uh, 2023, uh, late October, and then we were able to capture uh, more than 50 towns 
and then thousands of military bases, including the, the strategic posts. And then um, uh, so that uh, most of the border towns are now under the uh, resistance controls. Latest one is, uh, as you may know, that in the southern Myanmar uh, border town with uh, uh, Thailand, Myawati, which is the, the one of the most important uh, border town in terms of the border trade and etc. Yeah. Um, uh, so if I can ask a clarification, uh, you said that 50 or to 60 percent of the country is now under uh, the resistance forces. Is it correct, sir? Yeah, over 60 percent of our ter territories is under okay. the resistance forces. OK, and what's the link between the resistance forces and uh, the National Unity Government? Uh, uh, government, are you associated uh, uh, with the, the groups on the ground because they are taking uh, violent actions? Yeah, we uh, the as I mentioned earlier, well, and under the NUG, National Unity Government, we have the People Defense Forces under the military uh, defense. Uh, for PDF forces, we form um, the uh, the, we organize and we form the PDF forces. Right now, we have, if I'm correctly, uh, over about 330 battalions are under our common PDF forces. So, um, military of defense have the mil uh, military code of conduct, um, and in um, consistent with the international humanitarian law. So, that our forces uh, uh, must obey and follow the military code of conduct. And then, uh, as uh, you you mentioned, we have a different resistance forces across countries uh, because of the military uh, brutality and operations over several decades. So that we have run, uh, the ethnic arms, ethnic resistance forces, and the local defense forces. So that NUG, um, that since forming of the NUG, we try to engage with all the resistance forces, especially ethnic uh, minorities so uh, that uh, we have that um, the, uh, we try to uh, operate with that uh, uh, the, our allied uh, EROs that mean ethnic resistance forces and then also that uh, we stage uh, successfully we stage uh, the military operations not only the border region but also inside uh, the central Myanmar and even that uh, most heavily guarded um, then uh, capital city, Nepido, then north centers, uh, the our PDF and the resistance forces are able to uh, attack uh, coordinated drone attacks, station drone attacks on April 4th, and then also that are uh, followed by another attacks and in uh, about less than a week ago. And then uh, and, uh, and now now is in Myanmar. Uh, there's a, we are celebrating uh, supposed to be celebrating the Myanmar New Year. And then, uh, uh, and during this time as well, uh, the, our forces were able to attack uh, that uh, military uh, stronghold, Pien Uli, which has that the elite officers training school, like the uh, Defense Service Academy. Now, and then the rumor is that the, uh, the military chief Myanmar is staying there uh, in Pien Uli, so that uh, uh, the military uh, the resistance forces coordinated the attack, rockets attack in the period now uh, twice in the less than a week. Uh, so that means that uh, we, we because of the coordinated effort and unity, and that uh, we're able to penetrate so-called the most uh, safe places and most heavily guarded places. So that's true that uh, the, uh, the terrorist frontal leaders, there is no safe place in Myanmar for them. So, mm -hmm. and that uh, we uh, stress that of uh, the our uh, the fighters of uh, the military uh, the resistance fighters freedom fighters must obey and follow that uh, military code of conduct so this is that uh, we we carefully uh the the targeted the military legitimate military targets and then uh, we try to avoid um minimize sorry minimize that civilian casualties the other hand militaries are targeting uh intentionally targeting civilians uh, during this conflict. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so uh, what kind of help are you expecting from the international community? Have you reached out to international community? Are the members of the international community supporting uh, the national unity government? 
Yeah, uh, we diplomatically we are receiving the the strong support from uh, international community, especially from the Western countries. Uh, we reaching out to uh, all the international community, in, uh, especially we would like to set up. We want to have the positive engagement with our neighbors. Uh, those are the very important regional countries and our neighbors and up uh, uh, overall all the international community. So we have a, a lot of uh, sympathy from the international community uh, since that military, uh, this ter became the terrorist organization targeting the civilians and then uh, uh, the station, the airstrikes against the civilians. Uh, average daily, like uh, 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 about seven or eight times uh, airstrikes against the civilian targets daily uh, in later, later days. So uh, we, uh, we received that uh, political and diplomatic support. So our ambassador, um, the the Uto Moto is uh, representing Myanmar, still representing Myanmar at the United Nations in New York. That also shows that the um, military uh, junta is leg illegitimate. They even though they try for three for three times and they fail to secure the uh, representing Myanmar at the UN. Uh, so, but uh, in another another words, uh, we have to uh, uh, mention about the material support. So we have we received very little support from international community. So we this is the spring revolution, it's a people revolution. We are winning uh, offers, including military, because of the people support. But yes, international uh, support for diplomatic support is very important, especially the economic sanctions against the junta and the targeted sanctions against the junta military leaders. This effective, this helpful, but uh, material support we. Uh, almost none that uh, we received, but uh, we oh, uh, yes, international community supported the humanitarian, providing the humanitarian assistance. Right now, in our countries, almost three million people are displaced because of the violence, and then uh, over one third of the population. We have about almost sixty million people. Over one third of the population require the humanitarian assistance. Humanitarian assistance uh, for, through the UN going through that. Um, Going through that uh, SAC, that's my military junta, it's not affecting because most of almost all the displaced people are uh, in resistance control areas. So that we are pushing the international community um, to support. If they don't want to support um, other support, but at least support the effective humanitarian assistance to the vulnerable people, uh, direct support, cross border assistance, for example. So this way that uh, through that, uh, that whoever controls the ground coordinate, like for example, NUT and ethnic organization, and especially with the, 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 the people providing the support on the ground, coordinating with them would be more effective. So that's why that we are pushing international community at the same time, we are pushing international community to, uh, to take the strong action against a military hunter. Um, for example, targeted sanctions is helpful but also the accountability, um, because they they committed the serious international crimes, war crimes, crimes against humanity, genocide, you so, name it. But yeah. But when it comes to international community support, um, how do you see uh, India? I mean, have you engaged with India? Have you reached out with India? Yeah, we reach out to as mentioned. We we reach out to all our neighbors. Uh, we want to uh, we because our neighbors are very important. For example, India. India, so we have not only we sharing border over a thousand miles or 1600 kilometers. Uh, so, uh, but also we sharing that culture and uh, we being um, uh, the, the people to people relationship for thousands of years, over 2000, 3000. Uh, so that we are very close. We, well, our culture is very, uh, very uh, interlinked. So that uh, that's, uh, we, we also reach out to India. And uh, but many of our, uh, the, especially from the Chin state, uh, the, the refugees uh, fled to the India border or uh, the states like Mizoram and Manipur. Um, so uh, we we really appreciate the uh, Indian uh, uh, people of India and especially the local authorities, the helping, the posting, and the uh, generosity of helping the refugees. So, but we hope that Indian uh, as a whole Indian government, uh, as a whole, the well, the engage with 
and UGN, uh, the resistant forces. But right now is that uh, we've been receiving the reports that Indian government is uh, support. We uh, see that we are engaging with the terrorist military junta. So we we are very sad. Uh, um, I would say that uh, disappointed to see that. Uh, but we understand that India has to engage with all the stakeholders. Uh, but uh, we, the, that, that we acknowledge. But what we are asking that India is not to support, provide the support, military support uh, to the terrorist military. Uh, the UN Special Reporter Tom Andrews uh, mentioned that India is uh, one of the major arms suppliers to um, uh, the military junta, uh, in addition to Russia and China. Uh, if the history report is correct, um, most, uh, I mean, everybody uh, agreed that's um, very credible, uh, but uh, we, we were, uh, we, we urge, we request Indian government not to provide the military uh, supplies or support to the junta, uh, even though that uh, they need to engage with the, all the stakeholders. And then that, that's uh, that, so that, that that's we understand, but also the engage with NUG and uh, ethnic organizations, especially mm -hmm. uh, providing the humanitarian support. This way that we can protect uh, stability. So any engagement population. happening, sir, with the Indian government? Any engagement happening with the Indian government uh, since you said you reached out? What has been the response? Uh, I I have no liberty to uh, mention the detail of this stage. I would say that that we are contracting, engaging the silent diplomacy, so so that uh, this um, so uh, we op we have uh, different uh, communication channels. We are quite open for any kind of communication chan channel. So so that let me put it this way. Yeah. So, but any uh, government globally uh, looking to recognize the uh, government in exile, the national unity government, any perhaps countries in Southeast Asia, are they looking to uh, recognize you? Uh, right now, so far, uh, there's um, not uh, officially recognizing, but formally, let me put it this way, formally engaging with us. Uh, so mm -hmm. um, in the past, none of the countries, after, uh, uh, when when uh, we formed the NUG, none of us, there's so, zero formal engagement, even though there's an informal engagement. Now, many countries are formally engaging, the publicly engaging, with the national unity government, that's including the regional uh, countries. So that's a positive sign and, that uh, because we need we need the engagement to find the solution. Uh, this and, affected and these the countries are, and these countries are, sir. If I might take a liberty to ask you, uh, some uh, ASEAN countries, for example, yeah, okay, okay. so okay. important countries, yeah. So, but mm -hmm. uh, I mean, uh, as um, the since this um, the coup attempt and uh, there's a violence in Myanmar. Is increasing day by day, uh, as you can see. Uh, so this is not only the Myanmar internal internal problem anymore. That also affecting the regional stability and also the development regional development as well. Especially our neighbors are uh, bordering with us for thousands of miles. So mm -hmm. India is one of them. China, Thailand, and then Laos. So all are important neighbors. For example, Laos. Our neighbor Laos is the chairman current rotating chairman of the ASEAN. So, mm -hmm. so the, uh, the engagement with uh, all our neighbors are our uh, energy priority, and then we will continue to bank as for example, and they are hosting millions of refugees for our countries for not only for three years, but also for decades. Uh, so mm -hmm. the, uh, I mean, come and gone, but right now it's a uh, uh, million refugees and bank is hosting. So it's uh, burden for our neighbors and they're also affecting the regional stability. So we need to mm -hmm. solve this um, this uh, problem as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, so my last question to you is if you can describe the situation on India, Myanmar uh, border, uh, what's the situation like, uh, what kind of inputs you have, how bad uh, or perhaps improving is the situation? Yeah, um, one, it, we have a very good relationship with India, government India, when the NLD wasn't, uh, was, uh, running the uh, quasi civilian government because under the 2008 constitution, which uh, the military has a uh, uh, the control over. Uh, but uh, we we try to um, the Myanmar is trying to uh, have a good relationship with India not only politically but also the economically because it's important to 
important for the economic relation, business relations, important for both countries. So um, right now, uh, but since the coup and that those um, progress, whatever progress we had, stalled and even went backward because of the military actions, military violence effects. So now most of the uh, the border areas are controlled by uh, resistant forces, uh, the, the Chin state and also uh, the, I mean, Chin resistant fighters who are, who are our allied. And then uh, also the uh, our friend of the Arakan uh, army uh, is also controlling uh, that uh, Flawa region. So uh, so that uh, those are the area that control uh, by the resistance forces. And uh, so Indian government, um, I believe that uh, it's a time to reevaluate uh, their engagement. And that this is a time to uh, engage with and with us formally. And then uh, like like other countries are doing, formal engagement would be the next steps towards solving the problems, especially the border issues. What are issues we have to talk, we have to have the dialogue, and then, and then also that um, 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 it's not a solution to build a wall, and that it will be very costly. But once we have the peaceful democratic reform, and um, that that's uh, that's money, that's money should go to the investment for the both countries, so that uh, mm-hmm. building the wall is is not a solution. Uh, but I uh, we understand this is the India government has to. Uh, protect their own interests, national interests. But uh, one thing is that uh, what I'd like to suggest is that uh, the, the helping and supporting us on what the, the re- political solution uh, that reflect the will of the people of Myanmar, that will, will be the best guarantee for the border, uh, border stability as well as uh, the economic development. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, on that note, thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you.